This is Professor Rudy, and this video is on how to use logical statements in MATLAB. Uh, so first, I'd like to just briefly talk about what I mean by logical statements. Um, these are statements that are talking about uh, whether something is true or false. So for example, um, if we wanted to know whether a number was um, greater than a certain value, so I'm just going to show you a few examples. So is 6 greater than 5? Um, and this is a pretty simple example because we, we know that this should say that yes, it is. And what we'll get is 1. But then if we look at, well, is 3 greater than 5? MATLAB will tell us that no, it is not. So um, these statements are, are these logical statements. They're sometimes called Boolean statements. And this is where uh, 1 corresponds to true and zero corresponds to false. So there's only two possible values for these types of statements. Um, now you can also do things like um, greater than or equal to, that is um, a greater than followed by an equal sign. Um, so six is greater than or equal to four. It's also greater than or equal to six. Um, whereas six greater than six would say no. Um, this is the same for less than, so we can do less than or less than or equal to. Um, another interesting one is we can actually check if two things are equal. And if we want to check if two things are equal, we actually, instead of using um, one equal sign, we use two. So is five equal to four? Um, and the reason this is different than just using the equal sign is if you use an equal sign, that's what we have for assignment statements, like a equals two. Um, if then we do a equals equals to, it will say yes. And that was saying, is a equal to 2? Um, but if you just do equals, it will set that value into your variable. Um, so these examples were just uh, simple examples using scalars, but we can also do this for vectors. Um, so for this example, I'm going to move to this script, um, a typical header block here, uh, clear out my workspace. And then here, what I'm doing is I'm defining a vector of values. These are um, hypothetical test scores um, from an exam. So I have 10 values here. And um, I want to use these logical statements to show you how to find um, different things. Uh, first thing is let's just run this. I'll get my x into the workspace. Uh, just as kind of a side note, if we wanted to find the average test score, we could do that as the mean of x. So this was an average of 83.6%. Um, we could also find the minimum score, so 56 was the lowest, uh, maximum score was 100, we could find a median score was also um, 80, oh, not also, but median score is 86.5. Um, so we have these functions available too, which are a lot of times relevant um, to these types of problems. But that's just a side note. So we have these test scores, now we have some questions that we want to figure out. So my first question is how many of these students have received a score of an A. And in this example, we're going to call that a 92 or higher. So um, in this case, what we want to check is whether X is greater than or equal to that 92. Um, the reason we have the equals on there is we want to know if uh, the score is equal to 92 or greater than that. So that's the greater than or equal to. Um, and if we run that, we see this. We are getting so we had 10 scores, and we are getting a vector of 10 values. And we have this as 1s and zeros. So it gave us 1 if that corresponding value was greater than or equal to 92. So this first score, 100, yes. The second score, 92, yes. 56, 88, 72, no, no, no. 96 and 100, yeses. And then these last three were nos. Um, so this could be useful. Uh, and sometimes... Um, a useful way to look at this, uh, just kind of another side note here, is we can use the stem uh, function. And what this does is it's, it's a type of a, a plot. It makes a figure. But we could look at this and kind of see this result more visually. So we see that um, the stem puts these little stems and, and balls for each value. So my first values were true. These ones were not. These were true. These ones weren't. So this is just another way of looking at this vector. Now, if we just want to know how many have received that score, what we can do is we can, um, so maybe I'll set a variable here, numA's is going to equal the sum of this vector. 
So what that's going to do is it's going to take these values and add them all up. So we have 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 and so on. And what will happen is if we do that, we should get the total of this vector should be 4. Um, so if we run this now, we should see that numase is 4. And so this is a way that we can get um, the number of students who received A's on that test. Okay, so using that idea, let's do a few more examples. So if we want to know how many received 100%, so let's call this num aces. We want to add up again, and what we want to check is if x is equal to 100. Remembering that for the logical statement, to check if something is equal, we do two equal signs. So we run that. We see number of aces is 2. There were indeed two scores of 100. So if we want to know how many students failed, we can do the same thing. So here we're saying that if you received less than 65%, um, you failed the test. So that would be x is less than 65. So we don't have the equals on there. Um, and it depends on your application whether you want that equals condition or not. But here we do this. Um, we run that and we see that indeed two students have failed. That was the 56 and the 63. Here's an interesting one. Let's say I want to increase the score of any student who received less than an 80%. They're going to get bumped up by 10. This is some kind of weird and unfair curve. Um, not something that people would actually do, but it's something that we can do. Um, this is the example that I came up with. So first, let's just think about how are we going to find um, students who received less than 80%. Well, we've done that before. We know we can do x is less than 80 and uh, let's see what that gives us. So here we've got this vector again and we've got this of zeros and ones. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. So these ones are indicating the students that received that less than 80 percent. But then the question becomes is how do we use this to find those locations and only increase those particular scores by 10? So what we can do is we can take that vector um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna define a new vector so like x adjusted and I'm gonna start off by just setting that equal to x we're gonna start at the same point but then we're gonna modify that and here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use this x adjusted now instead of x so when the adjusted vector is less than 80 I wanna use these particular values and only change those ones so what we can do is we can actually use this logical as indices for our variable. So what I can do is I can say x adjusted of these values. So that's the same thing as saying x adjusted of and giving it this vector. And what this is going to do is this is going to basically it's just going to grab the ones that are true and ignore the ones that aren't. So let's even just take this statement and see what this gives us. Well, first, I need both of these. So what this did then is this just found the values that were less than 80, and it knows, okay, these are the ones that are less than 80. Um, so sometimes you might just want to find them. It's like list the scores that were less than 80. That's how we would do this. But if we want to take it one step further and increase those scores by 10, we want to modify these values that we found and what we want to do, since we're increasing them by 10, we want to take the value that they already were, so it's that same thing again, and then adding 10 to that. So if we run this, we then get that the adjusted scores um, are, well, the original ones that were greater than 80% didn't change. So we have the 100, the 92, but now that 56 became a 66. And... Um, let's see, that 88 was originally there. Let's put these up. But the 72 went up to an 82, but the 96 didn't change. The 100 didn't change. 85 didn't change. The 63 became a 73, but the 84 didn't change. So there are ways that you can modify um, particular parts of a vector by taking advantage of these logical statements. Um, so that's all that I want to talk about for this video. Um, and uh, you can see a related video on if statements, which also uses this concept.